Good morning, guys. Happy Saturday morning. And it's actually Saturday morning. Uh, I was so exhausted from working yesterday, I fell asleep in my chair and didn't uh, get to put my video, record my video last night. <laughs> when Mrs. P woke me up, I was like, oh my God, no, uh, I'll do it in the morning. So, but I wanted to talk about today was exactly what I put in the title. Is the American dream dead? And this idea came to me last night when I was out working on the smokehouse and I needed a, a bar clamp. Okay, I'm trying to pour the top to the uh, to the smokehouse and there's nowhere to attach it. And I was like, okay, I need a bar clamp. And I don't have a bar clamp. And I kind of went back and I go, okay, you know, I've got good friends up the road here. I'll call them and ask before, you know, having to go buy one. And sure enough, he had a bar clamp and said, yeah, come on up and borrow it, you know, whenever you're done. And it got me thinking about the sense of community and basically the American dream, you know, you know, uh, a house, two kids and a car. And I go back and look and I, I've got to say that that probably the American dream died in the early 80s. Okay. And it, I'm going to say this, some of y'all may disagree with me, but I, I've got a good reason why. You know, every generation will tell you, oh, gee, I wish we could go back to the ways it was when I was a kid. My grandparents did it. My parents did it. Now, here I'm doing it. You know, God forbid me turn into my parents. Uh, but I go back to when I was a kid. And again, like I said, I mean, that was, you know, in the 70s, early 80s, I finished high school in 84. And I, I look back at, you know, when we lived in the suburbs of Chicago, Westmont, for all y'all that know what I'm talking about. Uh, we'd go out and play as kids. You, you rang the neighbor's doorbell at 9 a.m. That was the earliest anybody was allowed to go out and play uh, because, for the most part, Dad went to work. Mom stayed home. Mom was feeding the kids, doing whatever, and 9 o'clock was time when everybody could go. All right, no big deal. And you came home for lunch, dinner, and then when the streetlights went on. And that was, those were, and it didn't matter. I mean, I could be 8 years old and half a mile away from home, and it was no big deal because the parents of my friends kept an eye, you know, for, you know, if there was a problem, I mean, we got to play the, we ran around that nobody had to sit on a porch and watch us. But if there was a problem, somebody skinned a knee or got hurt or whatever it is, you went to, you know, Greg's mom or Pete's mom or Dave's mom or something like that. And everything was taken care of. It was no, it was just like an unwritten rule. Then we moved to Michigan in 79. And this was about the same time that the silly as this is, that the Atari 2600 came about. And a lot of you guys probably remember the first home video game. And all of a sudden, nobody went out and played. Okay. Now, by this point, we're also to the point of, you know, we're now looking at two income families. You know, apartments are a lot more commonplace in, in even in the suburbs than they are. And you can see the demise of society because in the 70s or, you know, mid 70s, my mom was staying home in the late 78, 79, you know, it was time she had to go to work. Uh, you know, dad always worked. And then we're up in Michigan. The kids didn't go out and play. Now, Michigan has hot summers like anywhere else, okay? But I don't care when it was. It was Saturday, it was summer vacation, it was whatever. It, it was like deserted. And so I looked at it and I'm going, technology is literally, I think, what destroyed society. And it's just snowballed since. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't great uses for technology. Obviously, okay? I wouldn't be talking to you here if it wasn't for them. You know, you go back to the days before the computer and, you know, the, the comment, oh, there's really no need for more than about five computers in the world. 
and most of us have more than five in the house. You know, a couple of cell phones, maybe you got an iPad, a laptop or two, and poof, there's five computers. Okay, because all your cell phone is is a little computer that lets you, I don't know why they call it a phone anymore, because nobody even makes phone calls on it. It's like, so, you know, I look at that and I go, okay, the end of the American dream. Now, we get into an SHTF situation. And some of us are old enough to at least remember what it is, okay? Uh, and can revert back to that experience again. And again, this is what's going to make you the leader. Because when I was a kid, and you guys who are my age or older can probably all agree with me, every little group of friends had a hierarchy, okay? There was somebody there that was the the leader of the, the the clan of five or six kids no that wasn't me uh and you know then the rest were followers and there was kind of a hierarchy it was maybe based on age for boys it was based on strength maybe who had the the biggest bicycle or was the best ball player or whatever it would be but somehow there was a hierarchy and the same thing is going to happen in shtf but as kids we knew how to build a community you know, of friends. And, you know, then there was always the, the next community over. And they weren't enemies, but they were. Okay, you know, I mean, it's not like, oh, you wanted to kill them. But, I mean, I remember growing up again in Chicago. We had our group, the guys that lived on our street. And we'd have a baseball team, you know, all of us together. And we'd, six or seven of us, and, you know, we were a baseball team. And we'd challenge the the guys in the next street over to a baseball game or whatever it was, you know, either be at, you know, their field, which was the old retention area or our field, which was the, which was in the middle of a, a hay field, if you will, you know, homemade baseball fields for us. But that is what we were able to do. So you, you went up building a community and you had the, like I used the term enemy again, outside the same thing is going to happen in shtf but the the millennials the 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 gen wires the, what do they call them the new ones the zoomers uh they don't have a clue how to do this i mean none and i mean they can't figure out how to work in any sort of team in the workplace where it's established and they I should be the boss. I just graduated college. I know everything. The hell, who cares if he's got 30 years experience? I should be the boss. Okay. Not going to work in the business world, not going to work in the real world, and certainly not going to work in the SHTF world. So, you know, what I implore everybody to do, kind of go back to those, those roots of when, it, when you were a kid, and, you know, what was the movie, uh, West Side Story, you know, and you had those, those two groups. And while sure it was a take a modern day update of Romeo and Juliet or whatever, but, and they were violent to each other. Uh, notice how the group stuck together and took care of each other. And I bring that up because, you know, back in the day, and back yesterday, you know, you could ask your neighbor, hey, could I borrow a lawnmower? Hey, could I borrow some? And they'd say, sure. Now, you know, for most people, you don't even know your neighbor. I mean, the, the couple of years that I lived in Vegas, uh, I knew the neighbor on one side of the, the side of the house. I mean, literally the houses were close enough where we could reach out windows and shake hands. Okay. Uh, but I knew the neighbor on the left side of my house and I knew the neighbor across the street. Never, ever <coughs> did I say more than hi to the guy next door on the right side because he just wasn't interested. And the two people directly across the street, side by side of the house, directly in front of me, I never even saw them come out of the house, okay? They'd literally get in their garage, get in the car, pull out, pull in, close all the doors, and that was it. Nobody went outside ever. Now, that ain't going to work in any sort of aftermath situation that we get. But you know, go back to the days when the kids could go out and play, when you did 
you know, talk over the fence with the neighbor or, you know, have a barbecue and invite the neighbors over or whatever it is. Because whether or not you know it, that's you building your mag, your community for afterwards. Because if you're a hermit and sit in your house and do nothing, it, you're going to be a lamb to slaughter. Because when the littlest thing goes wrong in SHTF, and I guarantee you it will, you have nobody to turn to. So, you know, what I'm saying this morning is go back, go back to the days of yesteryear when you had neighbors that, I mean, I'm not saying be best friends or anything like that, but, you know, people that you can talk to and, you know, hey, what's going on or whatever it is, can I borrow your lawnmower, can I, uh, you know, when the kids shoveled snow for each other or whatever it is, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Go back to those days. Because if you keep living in society now of, you know, supersize me this, fast food, everything, all I, my entire social uh, existence is on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it would be, <clears throat> you aren't going to make it. I mean, and that's just the cold hard truth, guys. So, kind of wanted food for thought for a Saturday morning here. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to pour concrete today. <laughs> And hopefully finish this part. Uh, but y'all have a good day. Good well out.